Hi, I'm Pastor Joe Williams. Do you feel that our nation is headed in the wrong direction? Do you feel that somehow we have lost our way? We have forgotten the things that made America great. We have forgotten the principles upon which this nation was founded. At Parkway Assembly of God, we believe it's time to return to the Bible, the real founding document of this nation. We believe that Jesus Christ is the answer and the only hope for America. with us to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. I want to share with you today, living life with excellence. Living life with excellence. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God's will for you is excellent. God wants you to be excellent in everything that you do. God wants to bless your family. He wants to bless your children. He wants there to be excellence spiritually in your business, financially. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 and in verse 10, Paul said, approve those things that are excellent. Look on those things that are praiseworthy, of virtue, approve that which is excellent. Peter said this in 2 Peter. He said, add to your faith virtue. What is virtue? It's excellence. You see, God's desire is that we grow, that we stretch, that we reach for new horizons, uh, that we stretch our abilities, that we rise above where we are, that we become everything that God has intended and designed for us to become, to develop our talents and our potentials. Oliver Wendell Holmes said most people die with their music still in them. What does that mean? Most people die with their music still in them. It means most people never reach out and grasp the potential and the life that God has for them. The army used to have a saying, be all that you can be. I want to tell you, God wants you to be all that you can be. God wants to tell you there's more than an hour a week in church. There's more than singing a few songs. There's more than just attending a Bible study. There is a life of faith and a life of adventure and a life of being used of God, a life of changing the world. And God wants you to soar. He wants you to lift you up on the wings of an eagle. And He says... Step out, get out of the boat, walk with me and see what I can do in your life. In America, we have a lack of excellence. Lack of excellence in our schools, industrial. I remember when I was a kid, everybody wanted something that was made in America. I mean, really, when I was a kid, and, and, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way but when I was a kid if it came and it said made in Japan people said hmm I don't want that I mean because they wanted excellence and they wanted to have the very best and there was a time when made in America meant that it was the very best have we lost that today that sense 
of excellence? Have we lost it in our moral standards? I mean, have we lost it in our moral standards? I mean, we've gone from Andy Griffith and Leave It the Beaver to, what's that show that's so crude about men? What's the one that Charlie Sheen was on? Two and a half men. We've gone from Andy Griffith to two and a half men. We've gone from virtue to vice. We have gone from love to lust. We've gone from covenant to convenience. We've gone from fidelity to fornication. Excellence in your life is a witness of Christ's work in you. Every job is a portrait of the man or woman who does it. Did you know that? That every job that you do is a portrait of the person who does the job. Whether you paint houses or preach sermons, you need to try to do it with excellence. You need to reflect Christ and your Christian belief in everything that you do. You know, I just, I mean, I just want to tell you now, if, if your grass isn't cut, and it's two feet high, and the bushes aren't trimmed, and the place looks like it's abandoned, please don't go to your neighbors and tell them that God loves them and that you're a Christian and that you attend Parkway Assembly of God. Please don't tell them that. You know, we need to realize that what we do, what we do... It shows our character. It shows who we are. It reflects on us. In Colossians chapter 3, it says, Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then later in that chapter, I think verse 23, it says, Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. In other words, God's message is do it with excellence to the best of your ability. Don't be satisfied with the ordinary and the usual. Don't be satisfied. I know it may not look like it, but I really try to prepare and study and to preach with excellence. But you know, whatever, if you're a Sunday school teacher if you're working in music, uh, if you're a greeter, whatever you do, we need to do it with our whole heart as unto the Lord. We're not working for men. We're working for God. And everything that we do reflects on our Master. Everything that we do reflects back upon Christ. We need to give our very best Why do we sometimes fail? Because we have a limited vision of what God can do through us. Did you know that? We're all sitting here this morning. We have a limited vision of what God can do through us. If God could use a stick in the hands of Moses to deliver Israel from bondage, if God could use a rooster to preach conviction to Peter. God could use a donkey to preach to Balaam. Then I want to tell you, God can use you and I in our workplace, in our families, wherever we are. God can minister through us and He can do miracles and He can reach lives through us. 1 John, I believe it's chapter 4, verse 4, says, Greater Greater is He that is within you than he that is within the world. Oh, I want to tell you, God did not design us to crawl along on the ground, to be tethered to this earth, uh, to be digging in the dirt. God called us to rise above. God called us to be mighty warriors of faith, uh, to be more than conqueror, to live lives of adventure and lives of hope. Uh, to change the world wherever we go. God has called us to live the life 
that he's designed us to live. And I just believe that God's looking down and he's saying, lift your head up. Get out of the dirt. I've called you to win battles. I've caused you, called you to soar. I've called you to live a life of victory. Get up and be excellent in everything that you do. We don't have to believe the lies of the enemy. Satan is a liar. He always has been. And he tells you, you can't do it. He says, you don't have the talent. You don't have the ability. You don't have the opportunity. You don't have this. I want to tell you what, Satan is a liar. And if God has put a dream in your heart, then we need to dream a new dream. Oh, we need to catch the new vision. We need to look up and see God's hand. And we need to begin to soar on the wings of faith and let God lift us up to new heights. And we need to proclaim loudly before the world, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need to go further than the natural eye can see and say nothing is impossible with God. Well, we need to believe in ourselves. Don't we? We need to believe in ourselves. You say, well, pastor, I thought God was our source. He is. But if you're beat down and depressed, God can't use you. You've got to believe in yourself. What do I mean? What did Paul say? In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, Paul said, He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. Wow! Did you get that? Did you catch that? He chose you before the world was ever created, before it was formed. God selected you and He loved you, and He chose you, and God planted into you certain talents and certain abilities uh, and certain gifts uh, that He gave to you for a certain purpose, for a specific goal. God invested those into your life, and He wants to know what you're going to do with His investment. Or are you going to say... I buried your talents, Lord, but they're all right. I buried them. They're hidden. No. God says, I've invested in you. What are you going to do with the talents and the abilities and the gifts that I've given into your life? What are we going to do with all of those things? We need to see that we're chosen of God, that we're designed, that just like Queen Esther... We have been placed where we are, not by accident. We have come to this for such a time as this. We are here today, and God has designed you for this moment. You may say, well, there's not a lot I can do. You can use what you have. You can bloom where you're planted. You can have faith in God right where you are. Amen. Gideon. Gideon saw himself as a prairie chicken. He did. I mean, really, he did. Gideon was out working at night. You know why? Because he was afraid of the Midianites, and whenever they saw him, they would come and steal what he had and take it away. So Gideon's afraid, and he's out at night, and he's trying to work with the wheat, and all of a sudden... Behind him, he hears something, and he's thinking, oh no, the Midianites have found me. And he turns around, and there's the angel of the Lord. And the angel looks at him and says, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon goes, are you talking to me? Are you, are, 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 are you, are you talking to me? And the angel said, yes, Gideon, I'm talking to you. Gideon didn't see himself as special. He didn't want to be stretched. He's hiding. But Gideon came to realize in his life that it's not by might, 
nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And the Lord said, Gideon, arise. It's not what you can do. It's not what what you are able to accomplish. It's what God can do through you if you will let him do it. You know, you say, I don't feel like a conqueror. You don't have to feel like a conqueror. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing what you're supposed to do in spite of the fear. Courage is saying, I can do all things. I can accomplish this. I can walk with God. And then Gideon said, are you sure? And the angel said, I'm positive. And then the angel said, hey, I want you to go down there and listen to what the enemy's saying. So Gideon goes down, hides in the bushes, and he listens, and the enemy says, wow, we had a nightmare, and there's somebody coming, and somebody's going to destroy us, and God is going to give our enemies the victory. And when he got through, Gideon came back, and he said, even our enemies... Even they profess that God is with us. I want to tell you, when you're filled with the Spirit, when you say, I'm ready to follow God, I'm ready to live a life of faith and adventure, I'm going to follow the voice of God, even the demons of hell are afraid and they're fearful and they admit that there's nothing they can do to stop you. Oh, I want to tell you, Gideon heard the words uh, and he knew. You see, if we could ever see who we are in Christ, if we could ever see what God wants to do through us, we would be so excited uh, and so infused with power. Satan's worst nightmare is that one day we're going to wake up and realize our authority in Christ. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How do you see yourself? What can you do in God? And then the next problem we have is because we have such a limited or small view of our God. I mean, we've got a limited, small view of the great, awesome God that we serve. We do. And in Numbers chapter 11, verse 23... There's the story there in that chapter. The children of Israel are complaining, as usual. They're complaining. We don't, we're so sick of manna. Gee whiz. What is it with God's people about complaining? Oh, I'm so tired of manna. If we just had some meat to eat. Oh, and oh, it went on and on. And finally, God says to Moses, he says, Moses, this time tomorrow, they're going to have more meat than they can eat. He said, they're not just going to have it for a day or two days or a week. They're going to have meat for a month, and they're going to eat it till they can't eat anymore. And Moses says, oh, hang on a second, God. He said, do you know how many there are of us? If you got all the cattle and all the goats... And even if you got all the fish in the sea, could you feed us meat for 30 days? That's the wrong thing to say to God. <laughs> that, that's not what you say to God. God said, is the hand of the Lord waxed short that I cannot perform everything I have said? He said, watch and see what the Lord will do. He said, is there anything too hard for God? I want to tell you, we serve a God with whom nothing is impossible. The God who created the heavens and the earth, who spoke and He put the stars in space and He calls them by name and He put them in perfect harmony and orbit and He synchronized the universes. Uh, and that God, uh, He has given us His Word. And He says, get off the ground. Uh, stop pecking in the dirt. Uh, lift up your eyes. I want to lift you up on the wings of eagles. 
I want you to soar. I want you to know victory after victory and be everything that I've called you to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We serve an awesome God. God is greater than any giant that you're facing. God's greater than any circumstance in your life. God is greater than any addiction that is trying to bind you. God is greater than any guilt in the past that is trying to shame you. God is greater than any fear that wants to consume you. God is able to deliver you. Is there anything too hard for God? Watch. God said everything I have said will come to pass. And everything He said came to pass. In fact, God got a little angry with them for questioning. He said, I'm going to give them so much meat that they're going to get sick as dogs eating the meat. <laughs> he said they're going to get sick eating meat. You know, excellence begins with desire. Excellence begins with desire. You're never going to have what God wants you to have. Paul traveled primarily on foot. He had to cover thousands of miles everywhere he went. There were enemies and obstacles. There were people to try to to mock him and ridicule and stop him. But everywhere he went, uh, Paul kept pressing on. And finally, in Philippians, he said, I press on toward the mark, uh, toward the prize uh, of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Uh, And he says, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice because I'm focused on the prize uh, and nothing is going to deter me. And he said, these light afflictions are not even worthy to be compared with all that God has given to me. Oh, I want to tell you, when you've got desire, and when there's a passion in your heart, you can live a life of excellence, you can be more than conqueror, you can rise above the storm, you can soar on the wings of eagle. Why? Because God in you is greater than anything that you're going to face. Some of you remember the great World War II pilot Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager became a test pilot. A number of pilots had tried to break the sound barrier, but nobody had been able to do it. You see, when they approached it, the plane would begin to shake. And actually, some planes had crashed. But when they would get near the sound barrier, the whole plane would begin to shake and vibrate. uh, And then the pilots would pull back and say, we can't do it. We can't do it. It's literally tearing our planes apart. Chuck Yeager said, I can do it. And some of his friends said, Chuck, don't do it. Don't do it. You, You can't do it. It's impossible. Nobody can do it. They've tried. Chuck Yeager said, I believe we can. I believe we can. And Chuck got in his plane, and he flew, and he got to the sound barrier. And when he got there, the whole plane was shaking and vibrating, and it felt like the instruments were going to come out of the dash. And he pushed it on, and he said, we can do it. We can make it. We can break through. And he said, all of a sudden, whoosh. He said, all the shaking stopped. All the vibrations stopped. He said, it became as smooth as silk. And we broke through the barrier. And he said, it was like being in a glider, just gliding along. Everything was calm. You see, Satan wants to tell you there's a barrier here and you can't go past it and he'll try to shake your life up. But when you have faith in God and you break through the barrier, you break through to a new world and there is a peace and a strength and a life from Christ that fills your heart and you can do what God has called you to do. You can be what God has called you to be. And you can have what God has promised you to have. But you see, it's your turn. It's your turn. 
It's your turn now to change the world. God has chosen you to change the world. God has chosen you to live a life of passion and purpose. God has chosen you to be His agent of transforming change. Faith can move mountains, but fear can create a mountain. You know, in the upper room, they prayed and waited ten days and there was nothing. Nothing. Ten days, nothing. Elijah prayed for rain on the mountain and his servant kept coming back and said, there's nothing, there's nothing. Twelve years, the little lady with the issue of blood waited and there was nothing. I want to tell you, don't be afraid of nothing. Don't be afraid of nothing. Because when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Elijah said, you go back again. You keep going back. You keep looking. And all of a sudden, the servant said, Elijah, I see a little bitty cloud. Elijah said, you better start running, bud, because <laughs> the rain is a-coming. I want to tell you, God says if you'll live a life of passion and desire, if you'll, if you'll follow me and trust me, and if you'll refuse to quit, He said, I'm going to send a rain, and it's going to flood your city and your state and your life in your church, uh, I'm going to send a rain that's going to refresh you. I'm going to send a rain that's going to change your life. I want to encourage you right now. God is calling you to live a life. A life of passion. A life of excellence. To be everything that He's called you to be. I know it's scary. Nothing good happens without risk. If you'll listen to the voice of God and follow His voice and say, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to speak to my neighbor. I'm going to share hope with those in the grocery store. I'm going to share hope with those in the, my workplace. I'm going to share the hope of Christ wherever God gives me an opportunity. You know, did you know that the last week, two or three times, people I just met. And they began to share stuff, and I said, do you mind if I pray for you? Do you know not one of them said no? Every one of them said, yes, would you pray for me right now? And I had great opportunities to pray with them and to touch their lives. God wants to give you those opportunities. God wants to minister in your life. And He's saying, who will come with me? Who will walk with me? Who will live a life of excellence? Who will be what I've called them?